Greetings from Parts Unknown. My name is Sonny Safrito, and today I am joined by... Kervin, a.k.a. KD Swagger. And I'm also joined by... Yo, this is your main man, Pete, a.k.a. For Pete's Sake. And this is our July 4th episode titled The Originals. Thought I'd give you a little episode with the originals that have been down with Yep, I Like Wrestling since the beginning. As many of you may or may not know, Kervin and I both founded the group um i created it but we both yeah we both founded it um we actually have a group called basketball binge which was our first thing that we actually put together i created the group i was like curvin help me out with it curvin obliged it was it was at hudson river cafe i remember that exactly i mean not a lot of you listeners may know i used to do a lot of nightclub promotions so i had a lot of parties i used to do so Kevin used to come out to a lot of those parties Mm -hmm. and i remember him being a basketball nut just like i am and i said to him hey think about starting a basketball group you down i remember that you actually called me over by the door by the entrance and this was like late night and i remember i was drunk out of my ass so i was like yo i gotta like behave so i was like yo just stand i was telling myself i was like yo just stand still and just listen to him so then he's like yo man i got this basketball group you know i want to see if you if you'll help me run it so i'm like yeah 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 yeah." that's all i could say at that time (laughs) the funniest thing is that dude i was just as drunk as you were (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the, the per- now's the perfect time to plug all the groups exactly right group, so group so yeah <laughs> so just so you know we have about 11 other groups uh we have basketball bins we have baseball world we have dedicated one word football <laughs> souls and laces um Baby the music games. one i don't remember the name of it because it's too much i think it's like the, the, the music the, chico and everything in it i think that's it yeah i, think I got the, it right yeah you got it right because the thing is the that the graphic for it it looks like scarface and i was just when i did that group i was looking at scarface and i said hey instead of the the line going the i want music. the world and everything <laughs> yeah. in it i was like I want the music and everything in it, Chico. <laughs> so Comic 411, which is our comic book group. Uh, we also have a uh, Walking Dead group, which is Dead Life TWD. We also have a hockey one called Puck You. I love hockey. It's funny. That was actually one of my favorite names, even though I really don't watch hockey. <laughs> yeah, I remember telling yeah, you to start that one. Yeah, I yeah. grew up watching hockey. You got the Film Fiends. Yeah, yes. Film Fiends. So, I mean, we have, we have a bunch of groups. So, if you're ever interested in connecting with other fans of other genres of fandom, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we'll definitely put you into some of our other groups i mean i mean they got the what, the fan 220.com they could just go there and they got everything there right side note i actually lost the fan 220 website uh, but i may relaunch it look, but this I'm, is I'm, good this is good behind the scenes stuff that yeah. the people need to know man so I mean, due to like a financial a, error yeah, a, a I, misunderstding between a mis- your bank account and no the no no domain was, no no the sunny's <laughs> credit is now all that high no 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 the real the real truth is <laughs> credit score is 420. no the real truth is <laughs> I use my debit card for everything, yeah. and no, no, I had yeah. gotten a brand new debit card, but I forgot to update everything. Oh yeah. yeah. So basically, the fan220.com, the well, card you, that well, it was you linked gotta, to. You renew it every like two years, right? Like, yeah, that, but yeah, I had, the same shit happened to me because I have a couple of websites and it pops up on my email. You yeah. And build, and I'm like, what? I still so, got so, that shit. So what happened was that actually I had to get a replacement because I broke it. I use my card so much that you know the little chip, it fell <laughs> off. <laughs> it fell off. You so I was like. Chip. Damn, I got to get a new debit card. So I got the new debit card, updated almost all the stuff that I thought I had to update, except for that domain and, like, two other domains. Cause I got, like, mad domains. And Somebody took it, yeah. it expired, but, I mean. Dead end for Arrow, it was, for it Arrow was, 404 when you go. It, it was a thing where it was like, I don't know if I even want to use France20.com. I might want to use a different domain. So, you know. I might just forever <laughs> stay ever tuned. Yeah, exactly. Stay tuned. So, 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 evolution of the but brand, man. in the meantime, if you are in the Yep I Like Wrestling Facebook group, you can look in the description of our group and it has all hey. of our other groups listed. Exactly. All of our groups, if you look at our description, it has all the other groups that we are working with. So it was evolution a, of the brand, man, you know? Exactly. You know, things happen. And doing the stuff that we've been doing for so long, we've learned to adapt and roll with a lot of different things. And it's worked. It's actually worked to our benefit it's in been, a lot of it's ways. It's been seven years, right? Actually, longer. Longer, right? Because originally, when we first started doing um, our groups, mm-hmm. we, we had our basketball group, and that was catching fire. And then we, all of a sudden, Facebook did something where they were like, uh, we're migrating to a new format for facebook groups mm-hmm. so whatever group you have remember that they you need to uh redo your group redo your group so like 
I looked at when Yep was created. And when was the basketball one created? The basketball one is before that. Is our basketball group is our oldest group. It's and basically you know, the the it's crazy. the older it's brother. Crazy. It's the older brother. You can start with something totally yeah. different, and then it just you know yeah, what I mean? mm-hmm. so yeah, it just shifts over. And when the basketball one caught fire, that's when people started to say, "Hey, Sonny, you should start a football group." And uh, we started a football group. Well, actually, group. no, the football group. No, it was Eric. Um, I forgot his name, but he was like, "Yo, there's a lot of wrestling fans in this basketball group. You should start a wrestling group." So yeah, it was it was some kid named Manny that Manny Danny. exactly. It was Manny. some kid named Manny. Shout out to Manny. Hopefully you're hearing this. Hopefully you get hearing this shout out because you're one of the reasons. You're you one of the main hit. reasons why we started. Yeah, you need football to hit for the royalty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they they know royalty because he was a member of the group. He he made a suggestion. We just ran with it. So the football uh, one. <laughs> he didn't do the work. If I'm the football <laughs> one. You get the shout out. You get the shout out. No, no, it, it, and, it's not, and, it's not and, Manny and, Bonilla. It's not that no, one. Oh no, it ain't that Manny. But you get Manny. You get the shout there. out, and you get drinks from me whenever I see you. Um, the we, football one. It was suggested by Steve Gutman. Oh, he was yeah. the one that suggested the, right, the football Steve. one, and then next thing you know, you know, Steve used to come to a lot of my parties. Back yeah, in the yeah, day. I know. Yeah, that was, so, a, that was another one that I used to drink a Steve lot. Steve <laughs> suggested the football one. We started football one. Then we started the wrestling one. And no, then, no, no, it was ba- basketball. It was basketball then wrestling. You sure? I know for a fact. All right, so so basically, when did the basketball group start? Yep, and basketball fans are a little bit older than the dates I'm gonna give you right now because I actually have the list in front of me. Basketball binge started June 24th, 2011. Then Yep started September 15th, 2011. Then we started a month later, Baseball World, right? That was October 12th. Then the football group, that was November 11th. And then the next year we did hockey, Film Fiends, Comic 411, the music group, boxing and UFC group, and... um, we didn't do soles and laces, our sneaker head group, until like a year and a half after uh, our first group. So, so that's basically the baby. Yeah. I mean, the original group is the basketball group. Like, this wrestling group really started. Yeah, and that's crazy the way, like, you know, things could start off in one way and then it spills over into another. And I remember when Sonny wanted to do a watch group for watches, and I had to stop him. I had to say, chill, Well, chill. that was going to come from the – because so here's the funny thing about that. You know, in the sneaker group, People were like, yo, I'm going to post a picture of, of what I'm wearing today. But yeah. then people still started saying, well, this is the watch I'm wearing with my sneakers. So we were like, yo, should we start a watch group? Because at the time, I was getting really heavy into watches. It's rare when someone sees me with the same watch, unless it's like one of my favorite watches, because there's a couple of watches that I'm in love with, mm-hmm. you know. But um, yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm a big watch nut, and I really thought about creating a watch group, but I think... It was just too much for me. And yeah, it's too much. <laughs> so please, yeah. no, man. I'm begging, no. <laughs> maybe, maybe a watch Wednesdays on the sneaker group. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe we, that. We we might go back to that, you know, because we we we've done a lot of cool things with these groups. Yeah, yeah. It's not including the events that we've had with these groups. I mean, I mean wrestling speaks for itself, but basketball, we've had a lot of basketball events. And I mean, as well even as before football. the wrestling viewing parties. I mean. You know, the funny thing is, is that we were doing viewing parties for basketball way before we started doing anything for wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know, and then it was in January 2012, we went, we, uh, Curvin was the first, was one that hit me up. He was like, yo, there's a viewing party for Royal Rumble. Actually, I wasn't. Um, I remember us talking in the group. We were all getting to know each other. And this is when the group was starting to oh, really you know flow. What, my, my bad. It was Tyrell. No, actually, it wasn't Tyrell. Who was it? The story. It was David? I'm going to tell you the story. We were all, you know, the group was flowing. We had, I would say maybe around 100 members or so, 200. No, nah, we had more. We had, a, we had like, like about 900 members. All right, probably 900 num- members. I'm off by a few hundred. A lot of hundreds, actually. You but just missing a zero. You was thinking 100. It was more like 1,000. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. But anyways, the group was really flowing compared to what, how it was when we first began it. And then someone mentioned, yo, we should all get together and watch a pay-per-view together and that was around the time of royal rumble shout out to david vargas he was the one that said he was the one that looked it up and said yo they're having a royal rumble party at highland park that's right that's right so then we all said you know let's let's all go and everybody was interested and take it from there sonny i mean so shout out to my lady allison because allison came with me to that Okay. Now, Allison is not a wrestling fan, but mm-hmm. you know we were still early into our 
dating. Our movement. Oh, okay. oh, I, no, no, me and Allison were not. Me and Allison don't have a movement. We were dating. Okay. She was like, "All right, you know what? You're, You're into this in the, wrestling in the, in thing." The early sacrificial, sacrificial <laughs> stages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to, I'm gonna go do some shit that I don't like. <laughs> yes, yes, that was exactly what she was. Yeah, she was like, the, the, the found building the foundation." Yeah, yeah. She was like, "You know what? I'm not into wrestling, but I'll give it a shot." So she <laughs> came with me. So it was me, Allison, and my boy Gino. Gino, who used yes, to be my shout out to Gino, who used to be my partner when we were doing the the nightclub stuff. Gino was there. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So we we came through, met up with you and David and Tyrell, and um, that was the first time me and David met Tyrell. That's right. Oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, I thought you guys no, knew each other. No, we met. Nah, we met in the group. The only one I knew that day besides you and Gino was David Vargas and this kid named Dino that was there. Yo, that, see. This and is, all this we is had, all we had was two tables. That's all we had was two tables. And our WrestleMania party, we had eleven hundred people in two different places. So that shows the growth that we've had over the years. But but the thing is that we weren't involved in that party because that party, that's true. When we got there, it was a thing where I was like, "Yo, this is kind of cool. This is kind of like what we're doing with the basketball stuff. You know what? Who's doing this? I want to see if I can link up with them." And that's when I met Scotty, mm-hmm. and Scotty was like, oh, I'm doing this with my boy Wilkins. Now, here's the funny thing. I've been in the nightlife scene, no lie, 20-something years, like 20 years. Easy. I started using the name Sunny Sofrito in uh, 2000, and I was doing nightclubs. And, but the thing is, I had also worked in nightlife before that under my real name for a little bit, and I also did a lot of other stuff working in when in magazines and in and in TV and in other shit and radio and music, but this was me at Sunny Sofrito. So it was like I was rocking out in the nightlife scene for a while. And when I met Scotty, I'm like, hey, you know, uh, my name is Sunny Sofrito. You know, and he's like, I know who you are. I'm like, oh, uh, trying to be humble. <laughs> and, but the thing is that it was something where he was such Scotty, who was such a cool. Dude, yep. like he would be like, yeah, nah, I, I know who you are, you know, yeah, you know, we always, we, we, always showed love. Like, like he, like basically, I didn't know, I, I didn't realize it at the time, but we had crossed paths multiple times because you know I had done a lot of nightclub, a big nightclub events where it was like multiple teams, and he was on certain teams, but you know I, I didn't get a chance to meet everybody because there's so many freaking promoters working on a big huge party like i think it was at pasta or some shit like that that you know you don't get a chance to meet everybody but like you know he was like yeah, yeah nah I, I remember who you are you know yeah you know i've always said that the nightlife scene in new york city is is smaller than you think yeah well it, it definitely is i mean at the time it was a little crazy because like everybody was doing shit but um you know met scotty scotty introduced me to wilkins because it was they they had you know Sir Wilkins and Scotty, they had like a partnership where they would do a lot of events, but there were certain things I think that would be Scotty's baby and then Wilkins' baby. That viewing party was more Wilkins' baby. And that was their first event as well. Yeah, it was their first event. So um, I talked with Wilkins and I was like, and, and Scotty, and I was like, hey, you know, I have this group that we're working on with building. And, you know, I also have my background in nightlife, and, you know, maybe we should do something at some point. I was like, yeah, you know. And, you know, we talked about it for a little while, and a couple of months later, we finally kind of linked up, started doing it together, and we started, like, really building it up, mm-hmm. doing these events. You started know? slow. We had some bad events. Bad oh, yeah. events meaning, you know, we didn't exp- you know we didn't get the amount of people we wished we got. What do you think was, like, our worst event? Worst event being like, like, attendance-wise? Like, yeah, attendance-wise. Like, did we, I think we had, like, sometimes, like, 10, 15 people come out to one. It was, like, a roadblock. Yeah, I was going to say roadblock, but I'm trying yeah. to think of something worse than roadblock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last like roadblock was fast bad. Lane? No, yeah. not fast lane. We've always done well with fast lane. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, it's on the tip of it my had tongue, be, It had to be, it had to be one roadblock. of those pay-per-views back in 2000. Great Balls of Fire. No, Great Balls of Fire was all right. No, no, but that was, but that's, that's more recent. <laughs> yeah. dude. I'm talking about like back in like 2011, 2012. It has to be some pay-per-view around no, that no, time. No, no, not 2011. I mean, I mean 2012, 2013. I, I remember, I remember, I remember we did a viewing party. I think it was in 2013. And we were at Highland Park, and I think it was also the day of like some type of holiday or something. And no lie, there was like fifteen people in there. 
and we were part of them. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't think I remember any of that. No, no, that's around the time that I start just just before I started. When yeah. did you come around again, Peter? Me and you were arguing about this. It was a you said 2014, but I just confirmed it's 2013. Yeah, it was 2013. Dude. No, it was 2014. No, it was 2013. 20, 20, 2013. No, nah, it was 2014. Email. All right, dude, sure? stop, Bro. stop arguing with us. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, no. curving, 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 like, I, like, like, I, like I don't have the receipts right like, here. Like, curving is someone who doesn't, look, d- I, that I does receipts. not like saying no. He's look, wrong. Greetings from Eventbrite. Look, I, I got the emails from so, Eventbrite. So, like, I didn't know while they the while time. they confirm what it when it was. Wow, you have your emails from 2013. Yeah, Dude, I got it. Yeah, he's right. He's right. He got it. So like I said, we, we were talking about this before. You know, Kervin was saying 2014. I was like, it couldn't have been, like what, four years? I'm thinking more like five. So, you know, I look back on my emails. I see 2013. I got the receipts on, from the Invent Bright and all that. And, and that was, from what I remember, Extreme Rules hosted by Peter Rosenberg. Yeah. Funny thing, because I just started getting back into wrestling around that time. And what made you decide to go to that party? Like, well, I mean, like I said, I just started getting back into wrestling. Um, my first main, like, my first big event, I went to Survivor Series at MSG. That was in 2011, right? So pretty much that was, like, my return back mm-hmm. to the wrestling world. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So after experiencing that, that was literally my first live event. I never went to any live events when I was younger or anything like that. So, okay. So being that, that that was my first live event... I was like, how else? Can, how can I recreate this experience of of excitement and just going nuts with you know, a hundred other people? So as I started googling it, I said, let me look for you know places that show raw or that show the pay per views at bars. And you know, long story short, you know, came up with uh, I think it was a wrestling uh, party. What was it WPPV? Oh, that was Wilkins thing. Uh, his brand was called WPPV Parties. And um, it, he, he it was he, right around that time, right? Yeah, yeah. Like so 2012. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, was it? Yeah, 2012, 2013. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, like I said, long story short, you know, um, I googled it. I found some information. I was like, all right, this is cool. Um, went on to the event, bright, got some tickets, and yeah, it was at Highland Park. Yeah, Highland Park was pretty dope because um, I remember I remember the first time I went to Highland Park. I met the chef, and uh, it was a female chef. She was an awesome person. It was nice to see that it was a female chef because, you know, a lot of places it's male chefs. And was, and, and she was like really a, I'm a big foodie. So it's like she was like so like a general. I can't remember her name, but she was like a real cool person. And uh, the food was slamming. Like that was the funny thing. Like Allison at the time used to come with me to the events. Like when she was like realizing, yeah, I'm not really into the wrestling, but I'll come for the food. So she was like, <laughs> <laughs> so it was funny because like she would come, but she would be like, yeah, I'm just coming to eat and I'm going home. You you can have a good time with your boys and all that. And I was like, yeah, all right, cool. And that it's party, one of the things. And that party that Peter's talking about, we both had the same shirt on. No way. Yeah, we had the Dolph Ziggler the shirt. Ziggler, yeah. If I'm right, was it, it was stealing. The, it was it stealing the show and, and your girl. Is that, yeah, was stealing that your one? show in the front. It was in the, the back. It said and your girlfriend. Uh-huh. It was a turquoise yeah, it was a, the shirt. Turquoise joint with the zebras. Oh so, yeah. <laughs> I was walking around Highland Park, making sure everything was all right, and I bumped into Peter, and Peter noticed my shirt, and he I think he mentioned something like, "Oh, that's a, you know, we got no, the same yeah, shirt." Was, not many people were riding with Ziggler back then. That, that was what it, that's what it was. So it was like it was one of those moments where like me, me and him. It was the literally only, a Spider-Man, the Spider-Man like theme, the, the Spider-Man, Spider-Man meme. meme. Yeah, because we both <laughs> pointed at each other. That's what it was. <laughs> we both pointed at each other, and it was real quick. Our interaction was like, no lie, less than like five seconds or so. Like, like we just exactly said something really quick, and I just kept going. That's exactly and what I was thinking. The Spider-Man that that. meme where you go, where they're both pointing at each other. Like that's funny. And then the following that's party, pretty much an icebreaker right there. You know, the following party, if I'm right, it was payback, and we had it at a uh, Contra Lounge. Uh, I remember uh, Curtis Axel winning the Intercontinental Title that event. And then after that, pops or something, right? Or yeah, well, him and his father oh, yeah, became well, the first yeah, father and yeah, son yeah, to win the IC title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He won the IC oh, title that saying. event, and that event ended. And I was walking out. I had a Tim Duncan jersey on. This was June, mm-hmm. and I remember, um, if I'm right, um, the Spurs were in the finals that year, and I think it was against the Miami Heat. And I remember someone saying, "Hey, yo, Duncan! Hey, yo, Duncan!" Yeah, that was me everybody's going home and about to be on their way and i'm like yo let me holler at this kid real quick you know so yo i didn't know your name so i was like duncan yo duncan <laughs> <laughs> and then we're outside i was with david i was with tyro and a few others and then we all exchanged facebook and, then, yeah, and then i brought i put him in the group i remember that go. he uh, requested into the group i remember accepting him that's right that's and, you right know. you know you know what's funny is that me and peter were actually also talking about 
when did we first connect? Because um, one of the things that I used to do a lot back then, like Wilkins used to always dress up in the tights, right? And he still does. Mm -hmm. But I used to have, at the time, I had uh, a sheep mask. And I used to walk around with uh, a lantern. The Bray Wyatt thing. The yeah. little, I used to do the whole Bray Wyatt, the white, whole Wyatt family. But I had my own little. It was like I used to carry the lantern, but then I also had the sheep mask. And, like, there's a couple of women that I know. Like, shout out to Chantel, Isaiah Wolf's wife. Mm -hmm. Chantel used to hate that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I would come up to both of them, and Isaiah would laugh his ass off. And I, and I would just go to his wife, and I'd be like, hey, how you doing? She's like, get away from me. <laughs> so you wouldn't even say anything though. You wouldn't even say hey how you doing. You just rolled no, up No, no, no. Yeah. I would just I would just like, next to her and she would just she be like She turns around and says, ah. <laughs> she would just like get away from me, Sonny. And I'm like and and I would just tw tilt my head like why? And she's like get away from me. I'm like okay. <laughs> Cuz then I knew she wasn't playing. I was like nah. I'm not going to get my ass beat by her in, the, in the middle of the freaking memos and shit. But um yeah, nah, it was a. Uh, yeah, that was around like that was probably about like maybe a year later, like twenty. No, that was probably the same year, twenty thirteen. No, Bray no, Wire no, no. started getting hot, right? I think it was twenty fourteen because yeah, maybe uh, about a year later. When when Highland Park, which was where we first started doing these parties at, they they were oh, sold, yeah. and then we moved to Mimos. Yeah, so they were sold, and uh, when they were sold, we had to find a new venue. That's why we had did that party at Katra because we it needed was something the in between. The, yeah, it was it was the, the interim. it was the in between exactly. Yeah. And um, after that, in between, we, we ended up getting with... Uh, Mimos was a with, dope spot. Yeah, Mimos was amazing. And it was it was sad because, like, we never wanted to leave Mimos, but the unfortunate part was we had to because all the pay-per-view providers that, you know, just so you guys no know, the, to, to you the listeners, basically, when you go to a, a, a sports bar or whatever, the money they pay for a pay-per-view... Or for cable in general is not what you the, pay. Not the, the, the sixty bucks at home. It's not exactly. It's you know there's the commercial G rate and then there's the residential rate. You know us as regular consumers we pay the residential rate, but sports bars and and everything else they play. They, they pay by the by the um per the, head. The the attendance. The the capacity, the capacity actually. Yeah, the that's, capacity. that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. So when we when we got hooked up with Mimos. You know, Mimo was like the perfect spot, but the only reason we had to leave Mimo was because of the fact that DirecTV was not carrying WWE Network or any WWE pay-per-views, so we had to find a, a different place in order to... And that was obviously before the network. No, that was because of the network. Oh, the WWE Network? Yeah, dude. When the WWE Network came out, it changed the game that oh, people shit. don't really realize because the WWE Network came out and DirecTV was like, well... Since you have your own network Why and you're showing your pay-per-views, we we're not going to carry yeah. your pay-per-views anymore for whatever reason it was. I guess they didn't feel like the cost to carry it made sense because there's a lot of different finances that are involved in it. So they were like, no, nah, we know we're not going to bother carrying it anymore. And then they were exclusively on the WWE Network, but some venues, like Mimos, the way they were set up, each TV had a, a direct TV connection. So there was no way to put the WWE Network on all the TVs. So that was the reason why we had to we had to leave. Mm. But um, we're at Legends, and Legends been great. You yeah. know, it's we've been doing our thing there for is we've been there what like four years, four years or something like that. Yeah, yeah, because we because you know we also were doing uh, Sweet Thirty Six as well. Mm -hmm. We did Sweet Thirty Six a few times. Yeah, Sweet Thirty Six was fun. Yeah, Legends is off the hook every month, month after month. We keep testing their insurance policy. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> just tearing the roof off of that motherfucker. <laughs> it's definitely yeah, a good yeah. spot. So we've done parties at Highland Park, Mimos, Contra Lounge, uh, Sweet Thirty Six. We also did um, another place. I forgot the name of it. Um, Don't mention it. <laughs> uh, it's um, not worth mentioning. Yeah, it was it was Legends a spot. Bar. It was a spot not worth mentioning. Even though I made some good friends I, from that I spot, think but I remember that spot. I think yeah, I, made it was, a, I think I made. Yeah, a we were only there once, there. so it's not. Yeah, really we were there thing. once, and and to be honest with you, the place, which was in uh, the east side in the forties, they just was <laughs> dropped the ball. They basically. dropped the ball so badly, they like know. they didn't they, know what. They probably didn't take the event seriously. And no, then, they didn't. You know, and and that was, when they, when the, when the when the people came, they saw like a bigger outcome than they thought was gonna happen. Well, was that, like, was, oh, that was shit, exactly what up. happened. That yeah. was exactly what happened. Like we told them, hey, we're doing this. We bring this amount of crowd, and they were like, yeah, right. And and, <laughs> and at the time, it was like, oh, wrestling. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll we'll bring you in. 
Yeah, nobody watches wrestling, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, the one thing to understand is that since we've been doing all the stuff that we've been doing, we from uh, events to podcasts to social media to doing you know different type of content. Our own T-shirt store, Pro Wrestling Tees. All the stuff that we've been doing when it comes to yep, people have always said to us, "Do people still watch wrestling?" <laughs> or is like why it's fake or why it's this or why it's that and it's like yeah you know what your fucking game of thrones is fake too brother <laughs> <laughs> your, your favorite movies, movies like, your reality what are you tv doing what do you, you i wanna, mean you wanna, you wanna love and hip-hop you want to get tit for tat you want to get petty about it like i mean yeah. I, I, you know what i don't <laughs> exactly. like i don't like getting petty i mean a lot of you know me i'm not the petty I've type gone, i've gone no petty. but i'm just saying it's just but, an absurd but, conversation no no but the, the, best, the thing is you that know, even you want to watch something real watch the news but you what know, you're like, saying what is valid but you could just say but they yeah. don't realize it that's the thing it's not even doing it spitefully it's just like yo what do you yeah. like to watch and then most of the time it's shows that aren't real that are scripted that have some type of which is exactly what wrestling and, is and exactly honestly exactly. So I haven't that's the got, whole point behind it with me I haven't gotten the whole you, you watch wrestling like you know that shit is fake right I, I don't get that as much as I did years ago really? not anymore nah nothing like nothing like before yeah I mean you know what it is? It's because wrestling has gone through a form of validation over time where I mean, people are respecting it as yeah, I mean, as a form the, of entertainment. WWE yeah, yeah. has been around for as long that as long as it has and they're selling out arenas of, you know, every year for WrestleMania. You know, they have their own network. Yeah. Now their stocks up 70 something dollars yeah dude you know that's not I mean? so well, they're, dude they're, they're shout out to roger exactly. shout out to roger the the <laughs> stock the stock stockholder who's always shouting out how much his stock is they're, doing they're establishing themselves as a they're household they're, name whether they were before stock or wise not. stock wise they're reaching all-time highs and that's that's crazy because i kicked myself because i bought it when the network came out and i thought the network was going to blow it up i was like let me buy like 10 shares of this right now you know what i mean and see see what happens with it i think i waited like a year or something like that for it to go up I think to 30 or 40 bucks and then back down to the price I bought it at. And I was like, this is a waste of my time. They get over 4 million viewers every week still. I regret not buying any stock. I'm not I mean, idiot. it's, it's but then again, it, it, it's kind of hard for me to, it's kind of hard for me to buy stock. Just given my, where I work at, it, but it, that's a whole nother story. If I were to buy stock, it would be WWE stock. And I'm actually thinking about doing it. Yeah. I got to go through a whole process, but that's, that's another story for another day. That's yeah. another story for another day. So, yeah, so the the whole thing is that, you know, with the events, it feels kind of good to kind of tell these stories a little bit because I remember how I was having this conversation with Tara and she said that she was talking to someone who said, yeah, I've been going to uh, these uh, viewing parties that Yep does since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And she was like, really? Oh, so which spot did you go to? And she was like, oh, Legends. And I was like. <laughs> we didn't start at Legends. We didn't start at Legends. We started like a couple of venues before that. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't know that we've been doing these parties. You know, shit. We've been doing these parties for what seven years? Yeah, seven years. It's been a long. No, time. no, six years. Six, six years. years, and it's bigger than we ever thought it would yeah, be. We yeah, we yeah. just went through that with 2013. Yeah, around yeah. Around that time. Yeah, and and but this, but see, here's the thing that 2012. A lot of people don't know how how long Yep has been around as well. Yeah, because mm. I mean, Yep, Yep has always been that connection to bring wrestling fans together. You know, it's it started as a Facebook group. That is our primary thing, because Yep has you know fourteen thousand plus members, and you know we're constantly growing, and it's because wrestling is growing. Yep. And but the thing is that we've been around for a while, you know. We've been doing this thing for a minute, bringing other people together. Because I remember, you know, we get the reservations for the viewing parties, and I remember when Peter first started coming through. He used to come through. It was just like, hey, uh, reserve a table for me plus one or me plus two. Yeah. And then over time, you'd be like, oh, uh, reserve a table for me plus six. I'm like. Oh, okay. You got more people coming through. It's like, no, nah, no, nah, we're we're all coming together. So it was a funny thing because I remember seeing you creating friendships with other people, and you're not the only one. There was mm -hmm. like a lot of people that would mm -hmm. end up becoming friends. Friends, beca yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we even have people that became couples. You know? Oh, a, yeah. A, we've a, had a, a lot. Proposal. We, yeah, we even had a proposal for if I'm right. Um, yeah, it was it, it was, was Ch Chantel yeah, and, 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 and Isaiah, Isaiah Wolf. Wolf, and that was for if I'm right Royal Rumble. Forgot what year. And that was and and I could tell you where we were at because we were Sweet at 36. We were at Sweet 36, and we had the entire spot going. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yo, dude, 
there have been moments that I, during these parties mm-hmm. that I get like butterflies in my stomach or I get or no no bullshit uh-huh. or did I get freaking teary eyed because it's just such a special fucking <laughs> moment because dude I'm a fuck I'm a big softy bro yeah, yeah and yo honestly that moment definitely had me choked up and I remember after that happened I was telling you yo we made it we made it we made it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and I was looking at, when, when, when people are having proposals at your parties and, 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 and I was, marriages and shit you, you made it you officially made it yeah and I was looking at Curvin drinking my Hennessy saying uh, alright slow down killer this is a great moment but I'm not gonna let this shit just you know just get me get me hyped up cause if I get hyped up you know, then I'm gonna be super happy and I'm me, just like you know me personally <laughs> like I've you, been, you you've you been a yin to my yang of course cause, cause I'm the type of dude that Something dope will be happening that from something I created or like if I'm like doing an event or some mm-hmm. shit, but I won't appreciate it until later on when I'm thinking about it in retrospect. But the funny thing is that Curvin, at the moment, will be like, "Yo," and he would get me hyped up, and I'm like, "Oh shit, yeah, man, shit, this is a fucking <laughs> dope ass moment." But I wouldn't even think about it because I'm just like so. And you know, tunnel vision. Uh-huh. You're, yeah, you're so wrapped up in it, like. Yeah, so it's like it's, it's you're like you're not a, seeing it from another point yeah, of view. Yeah, so exactly. exactly. You need that. Exactly. You, you know, know. And, and, you, need, you need that lifeline. And the thing is that I've gotten that from you as well, Peter, because you know you've done the same thing to me, and I'm yeah. like, damn, you're right. This is a kind of a dope <laughs> moment. I I need to actually sit back and kind of enjoy this shit. And Sonny talked about how many members we have in our group right now, but all together, out of all of our social media platforms we have over twenty five thousand people following us in some way in some capacity yeah 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 i mean we it's it's been a very knocking on wood very fortunate very it's been a very fortunate fun stressful journey (laughs) but it's all worth it interesting me personally i've met a lot of special people this is why i always go hard for the yep brand because I meet, I've met so many great people. I'm not the only one that's met so many great people. And I'm going to continue meeting great people because of Yup. And I'm not going to be the only one meeting so many great people. Peter's one of them. Um, Sonny, I knew way before all this. But it's oh yeah, it's 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 we, in we the hundreds. Even, we we kind of like drifted off when we were telling the story about the Bray Wyatt thing. I used to do sick cosplay, a sick Bray Wyatt yeah, cosplay. Yeah, yo, so we that got, was we, a we thing. Kinda, we kind of segued into something else there. But, yeah, but, but it was to rewind a little bit, so, Sonny was the one i don't know he had the um the mask and the and the lantern and he was walking around mimos and i came cosplay i don't know uh i don't know if i had the hair and shit back then no no I dude you had the it. full bray white yeah i don't know if i bought the hair dude, I, didn't, had, I was like that was had, like when i fully committed i, can, I can tell you I was right like, now all right i'm gonna had, go out and buy some hair and dude, shit too. you had the beard <laughs> you had the hair you had the hat and you had the shirt exactly yeah. i remember i was like yo that's a dope ass bray white cosplay yeah, i was like, at, the, at the time i was one of the only people that was marking for him like that yeah like, yeah you know? well aside from you being one of the only people that marked out for him you were one of the very few people that actually came in cosplay. and did the cosplay. Yeah. So when I saw you, because like we had met in passing, and we were like, "Oh yeah, hey, what's up, man? How you doing?" But that day, I was like, "Oh, dude, are we gonna go fuck shit up today? We're gonna, hey, we're, 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 we're gonna, we're gonna have some fun." <laughs> we walked around that whole shit with the lantern. Oh, I remember dude, that. Yeah, I remember we, that. We, we had, yo, everybody, yo, I swear to God, that we gotta be in like so many like people double takes and shit. Like, yo, what? Yeah, yo, we were in so many people's <laughs> phone in, in, in photo galleries on their phone. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I we still took, got those pictures up on on my Facebook. Yeah, nah, that was it was a fun that was a fun event too, man. And it was funny because then that was when me and you first like connected. It was like, oh yeah, hey. And I remember like we were talking like, yo, Peter's a really cool dude. And almost a year later, I remember we were kind of like talking about, damn man, yo, this group is kind of hard to manage. I think we need some <laughs> fucking help. <laughs> yeah, this group has been very hard to manage over the years. Yeah, it's like having a child, but I, you know, it's I, it's, I don't it's know about no, it. No. It's, it's being a kindergarten teacher. Exactly. That's oh man, basically see, what it is. See, see the thing you is that you are of an official kindergarten teacher. That <laughs> oh man, pre K to first grade, or you know what I mean, like that bracket. It's so when you're when you're moderating a group, you're not just trying to initiate interaction with with people and and get wrestling fans to interact with each other and and create conversation but it's also kind of like being the fucking police and when somebody acts up you kind of gotta be like all right listen that please don't do that in this group 
it's you know it's offensive to other members everybody please respect each other and then you get the occasional well fuck you it's facebook and that's yeah. when you go ban oh man we've been quick with that ban i remember one time somebody was banned within like 12 hours of them being in the yeah group. but dude but dude let's let's be real in the that beginning the in the beginning we try to be super nice with a lot of people but oh like, yeah of course yo, dude nah come yeah, on I man mean, you know, i mean to be honest i i, I kind of just wanted to be a place where like there's no rules but you can't it's just impossible nah, yeah. no yeah it's, it's, like it's difficult wild, man. Wild and west. this is the thing we've all learned you on can. the fly i don't yeah you know i don't like having to tell people like you know i shouldn't have to i shouldn't have to tell people like like the way to act or the well, way it, what's it, acceptable you know what i mean what it is is common sense yeah. it's like telling somebody listen if you want to interact with people in this group that we have interact with them the way you interact with them in public because that way you kind of have a certain level of of uh interaction that you know you don't have to be an asshole just because you're online basically mm-hmm. and a lot of times we have people that were like fuck that i want to be an asshole i'm like all right, well, you can't be an asshole here. Yeah, Bye. Man. It's a typical problem. Yeah. The group is, you know, there's a lot of people from the New York area, a lot of people who go to the show, I mean, to go to, go to the parties. Or go to, like, indie, sh- indie shows. Well, but I'm saying the people that go to the parties that are, like, yeah. there's a lot of New Yorkers. There's a lot of New Yorkers, you know, but it's different because you have to remember you're talking to people from other regions. Not everybody understands your lingo, your ad- you know, the attitude you have, the way you say things. You know, so you have to kind of, you know, we have people in the group, members that are from, you know, international members. We have them from overseas. We got people from different parts of America, you know, so not everybody is is going to be on the same page when it comes to, you know, how you basically express yourself. A lot of these people, they don't, I guess they don't understand that or they don't really think about that before they put something up. And other people interpret things the wrong way or differently. And then that's how the altercations start and, you know, this, that and the other thing. And then we have to get involved in but it's just a simple premise of just thinking twice before you you know put something out there that brings up such a great point being an administrator of a group is a lot of work a lot of thankless work as well not only that we we're admins for all the other groups that we mentioned earlier too. yeah no we are but it, i mean obviously this is the yep i like wrestling podcast of so course. we're focusing on the yep i like wrestling group and with the Yep I Like Wrestling group, which is the largest group yeah. of all of it's our just groups, it's hard to get on. Mm-hmm. It's hard, hard to stay on top of things. That's why you know something that uh, I don't see. You know, you might curve and might catch, or something that Curvin doesn't see. You know, like that. You know, the, Sunny uh, catches. You know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's not funny only that our group members can actually report stuff now. Which yeah, is which a lot is, better. It's crazy. It's, it's which wasn't like that back in the days. Oh yeah, that's a great thing. Like now that people could report this shit, it's like, dude, I go in. And honestly, I go in, I read through it. I'm like, but oh, yeah, it's also, it's also, Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Bad. It's also a pain in the ass, though, because then you have these people that are reporting posts just because they don't like oh, dude, yeah, their you, opinion. Oh, on, yeah, you know, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody reports a post saying that Roman Reigns sucks, and it's like, all right. Yeah, but, dude, you know what? When like, I see that, that's when I tell the person, I'm like, listen, <laughs> if you're going to be posting this shit, then I'm going to ban you. So yeah, ban. False. So, so report. On, false reports. Exactly. Don't <laughs> cry wolf, bro. Force report, or for <laughs> false reports are uh, what means of uh, expulsion or exactly. Don't cry wolf, because yo, I'll ban your ass too. You know, it, it's funny because like I remember there was a time when you know, yo, there was many times where we would all get really frustrated because like we take pride in what we do. Yep. You know, we 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 want everybody to have a good time when when they're in the group and we and sacrifice a lot. For Yep, for everyone to enjoy Yep in whatever capacity you're in with Yep, whether it's in the group, you follow us on social media, or you come to our events. We sacrifice a lot so everyone can actually have an enjoyable time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, we sacrifice because we, we're fans and we want to do stuff for our fellow fans. I mean, it's basically the whole point of the group was basically, like you said, you know, Yep, I like wrestling is like the battle cry of it. You know, you get ridiculed for liking wrestling your whole life, you know, but your retort is, yep, I like wrestling. I'm still going to like wrestling. Yeah, and look at all these people who like wrestling, the 10,000 people on the page. Even but the thing is, the funny thing about it, the double negative about it or, or, or uh, whatever, whatever have you, um, is, is that th- these people that we have to unfortunately ban or give warnings to are doing the exact same thing that we tried to, like, protect people exactly. from. So it's like, how are you going to go into a group where we all like wrestling 
And you know how it is for an asshole to say, oh, wrestling's fake, this, that, and the other thing. How stupid are you to not like wrestling? And then you're going to go and then say something about, you know what I mean? Like you're basically bullying the people Mm-hmm. Those are the that people are in I, your we, group. We've had people. We've <laughs> Those had are the people, people I hate the most. Like, like, like this is like we've these had are the same people. These are your peers. They all like the same thing. You guys all like the same thing. But you're gonna go ahead and be the be the the same type of bully that we're trying to protect ourselves from in a way. And it's kind of like a double negative there. It's like, what are you really even doing? Not only have we had members say they don't like wrestling in our wrestling group, but we have a questionnaire when you request into the group. And I've had people type in in the questionnaire, <laughs> I don't like wrestling. <laughs> like, yo, why are you requesting so, going into the crew? Yo, this shit that's I've had so at great. least two people in that fashion. Not those exact words, or one was like the, those exact words I remember, but I forget somebody else had like, somebody had like a two sentence long <laughs> reply of not liking wrestling. Like, yeah, I, just, I mean, it's just like, why crazy. join, dude? Yeah, it's kind of I mean, sense. It's I just mean, something I never understood. Like, you know, I'm, like it's a safe haven for us, and then mm-hmm. you guys, you got guys that are in there. Just people all over the world. People, certain aspects of wrestling, not, mm. not, not exactly liking the whole wrestling as a whole. That's not your beef because you also like wrestling. But you like you're, you're you're bullying somebody because they like Roman Reigns or something. You know what I mean? It's just it's totally ridiculous. I don't understand it. But you know what's so funny is that we're not just a Facebook group. I have a lot of friends that are diehard people for. Yep, I like wrestling. And they love what we do. They come to our events all the time. But, yo, I'm going to tell you right now. They hate our group. Yeah, they hate the group. They hate. I mean, actually, actually, you know what? Not that they hate our group. Hate wrestling groups. Hate groups in general. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't fuck with groups. Because the main point of groups for for a lot of people are, are to troll. It's, it's, yeah. it's I remember crazy. one story. It was, know, I, can't, I, can't it was, I remember it was one story. A friend of mine named Alex, who I've met through the parties. And he was being a total dick in our group. And we banned him. And he made a post on his Facebook personal page saying that he was just banned from Yup, I Like Wrestling. And it was like getting future at Denver by WWE. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. I think I remember that. He said out of all the groups that he's banned, he's been banned in because he hates groups. He felt proud of that the most. (laughs) Yup was the proudest one. We've moderated our groups a certain way but i've always said this in our in conversations yep is not the group and the reason why i've said that is because yep is about the people that we stand up for we're a community we're a community but we've all at one point or another been ostracized for being wrestling fans Mm -hmm. i remember having conversations with numerous wrestlers and telling them why our name is yep i like wrestling and when I told them what the meaning was behind it, they were like, thank you. Because it's almost as if we're validating what they do as well. And it's a form of entertainment that should be taken more seriously than it is. Mm-hmm. And speaking of wrestlers, um, I want to mention and talk about the wrestlers that have either hosted our parties or even attended our parties over the years. Um, people like... Marty Jannetty, uh, Virgil, Mark Henry, Peter Rosenberg, Sam Ken, Roberts, Ken Shamrock, Ken Shamrock Heidenreich, uh, JTG, Joey, Joey Ryan, Ryan, Simon G- Gotch, Ashley Massaro, MVP. Yo, when MVP came through, that shit was a huge ass shock. Because he, MVP. He was yo, not booked. Yo, well, it wasn't even so much that he was not booked, but it was even that was more. Shoot, that was a shoot appearance. Yeah, that was a, definitely a shoot appearance because the whole thing was that. When MVP came through, he was at a bar that was for Raiders fans. And a friend of a friend was there, and he was like, hey, man, I'm looking for a place to go watch tonight's uh, wrestling pay-per-view. It was this kid named Ross. He ended up contacting Anthony Soto. Shout out to Anthony. And he said, Anthony, what's that wrestling, um, wrestling party, those wrestling parties that you usually go to? And that's when Anthony said, yeah, yep, I like wrestling. Um, they're at Legends Bar. So the next thing you know, they went to Legends Bar. And, yo, when MVP came through, he was like, yo, he was just chilling. Like, he was dead ass. He was there as a wrestling fan. That's what I'm saying. The next thing you know, I missed that one. He rolls up to the bar, you know, just starting ordering drinks and shit, chilling. Like, it took a while before people actually realized that he was standing there. Yeah, yeah, because I didn't didn't put him on the mic. I I I didn't announce him. I did a a quick video with him. He was just chilling. And then once people saw people taking pictures with him, it started, like, domino effect, like, 
wait, what? Fucking MVP is just chilling there watching a the pay-per-view? The funny thing is that <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't bring him on the mic until, like, towards the end. You know, we shout out MVP, but JTG. Just as important because that dude has come to multiple events and always shown love and is such a fucking cool guy. Yeah, JTG I mentioned. Yeah, he's been yeah. to at least two or three of our parties. Him and I, our birthdays are very close together. Sagittarius is, my birthday is December 9th. His, I think, is the 7th or something like that. And I find that with my fellow Sagittarius, we always kind of, like, mm-hmm. connect and bug out with each other. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, dude, what's up? You coming through tonight? He's like, uh, yeah, 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 I think I'm coming, I'm coming through. I was like, yo, you got a new book, right? He was like, well, yeah, why? I was like, because I want to promote this shit. He was like, really? He was like, yeah, just Bring your shit through. I'm going to fucking promote that shit. Because <laughs> he's a cool dude. Yeah. So it's like he wasn't asking to be to, to for us to promote his stuff. Uh-huh. I was just like, yo, dude, bring your stuff through. I want to show you love because you're mad freaking cool. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, and he's even given our his, he's given our, us his books to yeah. uh, use for our raffle prizes. The, and he found this on Instagram, too, because I remember when we started the, um, the Yup Instagram account. I was posting a lot of crime time stuff early on, and I that's would tag that, him. Well, yeah, but that's because you're a crime time yeah, mark. Yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm a crime <laughs> time mark. They should have won the tag titles, but that's a different story for another day. <laughs> so he just started we'll an Instagram started. account. He barely had any followers. He wasn't really following anyone. He was really new just as much as we were new on Instagram, and I would tag him. And next day, you know, he started following us. He started to see the movement that we had, and then next day, you know, he... He, he came to our parties. He came to a WrestleMania party and a SummerSlam party before. Yeah, yeah. But he's, he's, a, he's a really He's been good. really cool. We've had a lot of really different wrestlers that I just named um, well, earlier. Well, we had Rikishi. Teddy, we had Teddy Rikishi Long. recently, Teddy Long, yeah. um, W Hall of Famer Sonny, and we've also had a lot of independent wrestlers here oh, in the dude. New York area. I mean, when it comes to the independence, I mean. Oh, yeah, forget shout, about it. Shout out to. Aramis, Aramis La Paz, Paz, Frankie Flo, Ray Ravello uh, from Legendary yeah, Action Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, shout out also, big shout out to Mr. Mr. Martinez Blaze. from Federated Wrestling. Uh, exactly. Isaiah Wolf and Marcus Marquis. Real quick, Isaiah Wolf, that is a dude to keep an eye on. That is a good, good dude. Faye Jackson is another uh, indie wrestler that has been to uh, several of our parties. Exactly. Faye, Faye was actually at some of the early parties before she got into wrestling. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, I was uh, talking with her at, after one of the uh, BCW events, and we would, and she was like, yeah, you know, and she showed me a picture, and I was like, oh, shit, you were there. And mm-hmm. I was like, she was like, yeah, I really was. I'm, I'm for real with it. And I was mm-hmm. like, wow. But, um, you know, that's been another mm-hmm. thing, another aspect of where Yep has gone is connecting with people on the indie scene. We've been blessed to make a lot of great connections with a lot of different wrestling promotions like BCW, Battle Club Pro, Legendary Action Wrestling, you know, with Frankie Flo and all that and that whole crew. And uh, also we even House of Glory, you know, big shout outs to Brian Excel as well as Zachary Snow. Uh, got a lot of love for all those dudes over there. They Amazing Red. You know, they do some amazing work to mm-hmm. be on, to, to pardon the pun. Mm-hmm. But um, the funny thing is, is that even one of our own is doing their own thing, too. Um, Peter. Oh, I mean, I dude, put me on the spot now. right? I, I got to put you on the spot because it's of like, course. dude, with, with all the stuff that, you know, we've kind of like done together and everything. You've branched out into doing your own thing, which yeah. is called NYC Wrestling. Exactly. Now you create. Which, dude, I got to tell you, is one of the best names I've ever heard. I mean... He said that from the beginning. And, dude... From every beginning, he told me that. Dude, I said it before I even knew that was you. It's a pretty serious (laughs) thing. (laughs) Before I knew it was you, I was like... Damn, NYC Wrestling. Fuck, that shit is a great name. I should have taken it. Damn it. (laughs) How EC Negro said it one time in one of his videos... Even if they don't like the wrestling... They're going to shout out NYC. Because it's New York City. Basically, with NYC Wrestling, you know, we have a fusion. What we, what we wanted to do is a fusion between hip-hop and wrestling. You know, we know that there's an overlapping you know, area there. And, you know, being that NYC, the birthplace of hip-hop, it may not be the birthplace of wrestling, but it has a very strong wrestling scene. We got, what is it over here in the Northeast? Uh, Philly, New York, Boston is a top three spots for wrestling over here. Um, but, but basically what we try to do, you know, NYC, um, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere, right? Isn't that what Sinatra said? You know, 
that's just basically basically the, the main premise b- b- behind it so um aside from making it a, a fusion between classic hip-hop roots um hard you know hardcore indie wrestling it's also you know if you can make it here you can make it anywhere we have nyc initiative matches um at each one of our shows where we bring guys in uh that might you know it might be uh new to the group or or uh or or we're trying to decide of what, whether or not we want to bring them into the group um so we have them basically prove themselves you know if you can make it here you can make it anywhere um and that's the main premise behind the, the whole nyc thing uh you know obviously nyc being new york city but you know the acronym for that is now you create so now you create wrestling you know we're very heavy into um um communication with fans we're very heavy into um you know taking criticism um, listening to what the fans want you know um that's dope things of that nature so like i said before you know there's definitely an overlapping um a market when it comes to music and and wrestling that i think gets overlooked a little bit um you know we got our key players peter rosenberg uh wale you know fabulous action yeah. bronson um, action bronson oh yeah uh, that's Rick what I Ross. Yeah. a lot of these guys they love wrestling you know flow rider flow rider <laughs> You know, so we know that there's something there and we just wanted to bring it into, you know, bring it to reality. I love how you guys use your flyers and combine it with like classic hip hop albums. Yeah, exactly. Like, for example, Nas Illmatic, Capone Noriega, War Report, many other albums like um, 50 the, Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying. The Stomatic album cover, we mm-hmm. had the Get Rich or Die like, Trying. I love how you, I, the, I love uh, that, I love that creativity. Uh, it's, that, was, that's, that goes hand in hand with the whole uh, birthplace of, uh, of hip hop and just classic hip hop and just, uh, you know, bringing that, that raw, um, that raw feel mm-hmm. to, to, the, to the, um, the promotion. There's tons of stuff out there that we could, you know, continue to, you know, use per se for our you know flyers and things like that and things of that nature and basically like a theme overall that we have for these Without shows and you guys have had some notable names already like for example alpha jr teddy hart mm-hmm. um ortiz yeah. and santana from LA, LAX. lax uh-huh yeah by the way that match that you guys had at the end of your of uh your first event in uh in, in the, the bronx. bronx yeah dude the Which end of that match where it was LAX versus the Hit Squad, dude, I have never seen a more brutal match. They were grabbing chairs from all over just to hit each other with. Yeah. And I was standing next was to a chair, and he was like, yo, <laughs> go ahead, give this chair to the rest of us. And I'm just like, nah, I ain't doing that shit. I'm not contributing to this shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I'm freaking not going to be responsible for somebody's <laughs> fucking death. I'm not, I'm not going to be responsible for somebody else's extra no, concussion. Yeah, seriously. But, yeah. it was a, it was, but the thing is that it was a great match. And to you, the listener, if you've never been to a one of those indie shows at a rec center or at like at a large gym, let me tell you something. I was not a big fan of going to it. Let me tell you something. Watching indie shows at these small smaller venues are the best things ever because of the fact that it's a more intimate it's two setting feet away from your face you get more bang for your buck mm-hmm. yeah yeah you get more bang for the you buck know? but i think it's also an opportunity to see some talent that would never make it to tv but they are super talented and super engaging because like i'm gonna tell you right now one of my favorite talents hands down is caveman caveman's a good friend of mine he's actually the trl champion right now. yeah yeah he was actually on trl on mtv's trl not too long ago and um that dude is one of my favorite talents on the indie scene and he's someone that you should go and check out at an indie show same way as i think the ugly ducklings are amazing i think all the guys that are down with federated are amazing personal friends of ours ray Ravello. Aramis La Paz, Frankie Flo, all these dudes mm-hmm. are amazing talents. Mm-hmm. Merengue Warrior. Isaiah Wolf, who mm-hmm. is on the rise. Marcus Marquis, mm-hmm. you know, the New York Wrecking Crew. There's and so many dudes that are out there that are amazing, but you're only going to see them on the, in the, uh-huh. on the indie scene and right now. And you don't just meet guys who have never stepped foot in the WWE. There's wrestlers that have been under the WWE umbrella, and, and they're now in yeah. the indies, and yeah. Cody Rhodes is one of them. And he's oh. doing a great job in the indie scene. 
Yeah, but you that know? dude, that dude's about to become the like the next big thing, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm I just mean, saying, like, no, you know. I mean that it, it's it's funny because like I, there's indies and then there's like upper indies. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't even use Cody Rhodes. I would mm-hmm. say like uh, Kurt Hawkins. Kurt yeah, Hawkins. well, Kurt Hawkins, Kurt Hawkins is signed, but like if Kurt Hawkins was, that, wasn't signed, yeah, yeah, with yeah. Kurt Hawkins, but he does need. indie events. He does mm-hmm. even though he's with right now? WWE. He actually owns. Does he still has? Yeah, he okay. actually owns his own company, which is Creator Pro. Well, I know that he he owns the company, but I wasn't sure if he was still doing indie I know events. I've seen he owns it with cards, uh, he owns it with Pat Buck, who was also under the WWE umbrella at one time when they had OVW. Oh, okay. You know, so I mean, it is possible, and there are dudes are out there who are doing you know both. One match that I really liked at NYC Wrestling was um, Teddy Hart versus EC Negro. Yeah, that was that a was crazy one match. match where the turnbuckle actually broke off, and he still continued to wrestle. Teddy Hart still was nice. got on top of the rope, even though <laughs> the second turnbuckle was broken down. That That's talking was, about adjusting and I adapting. Mean, at, at the end of the day. If you've never been to an indie show, we would highly recommend it. Specifically NYC Wrestling, because when I went to see NYC Wrestling recently, every match was great. Every match was and either that's, entertaining. That's what we tried to do. I mean, yeah, every match was entertaining in some type of form. It was great in ring wrestling. You know, well, I, you know I, what the funny thing is that I love the wrestling. I love all that other stuff, but I'm such a huge mark for like old school music too. And it's like I, whenever whenever I would go to any other indie shows. They will play, you know, different music, but the guys that you had putting the music together there, that shit had me open because it was like a lot of old school hip hop yeah, I mean, stuff that, that. You know what I mean? We have we're, 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 stuff that hits me, you know, being the we, residential yeah. old man. We run out of the Bronx, you know. I mean, that's yeah, yeah. all, you know, the roots right there. So we got old school. Speaking of the, rest- the soundtrack to our entire promotion is just classic hip hop, you know. Speaking of music. You're also doing some music stuff too, right? Yeah, exactly. You have mentioned it to me, but fill me in on, fill us in actually on the music that you're working on right now. I'm a man of many trades. I wear a lot of hats, you know what I mean? And it's really hard between having an actual shoot job and working crazy hours at that job and then having try to try to find spare time to, you know, moderate the, the Yep page, to come over here and sit down with you guys to, you know, figure out what, you know, the next... Uh, um, show is going to be with NYC Wrestling and then also, you know, on the side, try to do my music thing. And um, basically, I've always been doing the music thing. I've been doing it since like senior year of high school. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure. I don't want to date myself, but, you know, that's that's definitely about, you know, uh, over 15 years. So the music that you're working on, where can people find the music that you're doing right now? Right now, I just have my stuff on SoundCloud. Um, What's the, well, well, dude, give the link. What's the link? So it's soundcloud.com slash four underscore Pete's, P-E-T-E-S underscore S-A-K-E. Okay. So right now, that's, that's where I'm at. That's where you could find, you know, anything new that I'm coming out with. Um, you could also follow me on Instagram, which is the same thing, but there's two underscores. So it's four underscore underscore pete's p-e-t-e-s underscore underscore s-a-k-e for pete's sake that's a long ass fucking name yeah man <laughs> i actually i actually like it because it's actually a ring to your real name peter well that's what it is like i tried to before i used to go under the the alias and uh, novocaine yeah, i remember that know, i think that oh, wore, yeah, that, right. that kind of wore thin i thought it was kind of corny for you know to begin with but i just didn't really know what else to run with and just wanted to uh be a little bit more realer i guess and try to use incorporate my real name in there um you know uh I, I, I'm trying to think. Mid Drake, you know, he has that's his middle name. Um, there's a couple other people out there. Styles P. His yeah, last name is there's, Styles. There's a couple other people out there who have their name. J- Jada there. Kiss, his first name is Jason. You know what I mean? So I tried to get a little bit more, you know, in touch with that. Katie Nas. Swagger. Katie Swagger, Nas, which is my exactly. initials. Yeah. Which I, 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 I have, I've wrapped myself, but that's a different <laughs> story for another day i don't even want to talk about that <laughs> even though i still do it on for fun only though you um know. Nas with najir exactly you know so i mean it's many like, like i said there's also a couple other ones right now I'm, i can't it's not coming to you know top of my head dr dre his real name is andre but you yeah, know there's a lot of them wow, like that. that that's a great name by the way dre, andre so, yeah. yeah that's a great name <laughs> it's a lot worse than sunny no fuck you <laughs> fuck you too <laughs> so um 
<laughs> yeah, so, I mean, as of right now, that's just what I'm doing. I mean, uh, like I said, I took a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, it's been a long time since I actually started, like, treating it seriously. Um, so, for right now, I'm just putting my stuff on SoundCloud until I can uh, get a little bit of a catalog together, get a little bit of a following, and, uh, you know, try to um, basically, you know, get my stuff on iTunes and stuff like that, take the next step and whatnot. That's all what's right. up, man. Yeah, it's all about getting your name out there. Yeah, exactly, man. It's all yeah, about man. networking. It's all about getting your name out there, making videos, yeah, yeah. making songs, and so on and so forth. That's exactly what it's about, and uh, we wish you nothing but the best on that because you've always supported us, and we always support you, so that goes without love saying. Love. Now, going back to your wrestling promotion, where can wrestling fans find NYC Wrestling on social media? Uh, well, right now we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, and also Facebook. Um, so on Instagram and Twitter, the uh, the handle is NYC Wrestling. It's pretty simple. And on Facebook, um, it's facebook.com slash NYC Wrestling. Oh, so your social media name is NYC Wrestling everywhere. Yeah. The next thing to come up is the uh, the YouTube. That's the best way to do it, though. Um, the next show we actually have lined up is Protect Your Neck. That's going to be August 10th. Watch your step, kid. Exactly. Watch your step, kid. Watch your step, kid. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Cruising to your town like a neighborhood spider man. So August tenth is a, actually a Friday, and that's the date that we're dealing with right now. I want to listen to some Wu Tang right now. Ah, right, so what's up, man? I, I love, I love when you so, guys do that with the whole hip hop albums, exactly. and hip hop songs, and so Thank on and so you. forth. We appreciate that. That's, I that's love our it. goal. You know, we like I said, we know that there's a market out there. We know that there's people who love the both of you know mm-hmm. the music and the oh, wrestling. it definitely is. You know, so I mean, and being that we're coming out of the Bronx, you know. It's just uh, it's that's the way to do it, dude. Hand hand. But the next show that we got coming up, I mean, we want it to really be one of our biggest shows. Um, if it's not going to be in the Bronx, it might be. We're, we're looking at venues in Jersey um, and other places in the Bronx. We want to expand. You know, the place that we're running out of now, it's you know, it's a great place. Um, but we just, you know, we want to just try to get a place of a venue that could hold a little bit more people. This way we could bring you a bigger show. We wish you the best of luck in that. Thank you, and, thank you. Um, you know, looking forward to you getting me that information so I could definitely plug it on the, the podcast. Because, like I said to you guys, the listeners, the indie shows is the shit. It's definitely something to do. Yeah, you'll but, definitely um, hear more about it as the as the date approaches. And uh, like I said, if you guys follow the social media, I mean, you'll definitely see, you know, uh, the, the uh, flyers and, and, the, and the roster that we got lined up. So, yeah, you're going to let us know about that. And, um, yeah, you just dropped a new single, right? Yep. Yep. The, just don't forget about the new the new record I got out now called Flexin. It's just in time to start the summer off to kick it off. Right. You know, it's a big time summer banger. OK. You know, so definitely for you, you know, for you guys out there hopping the whip. If anything, we're going to put that out there, too. So, you know what? I'm going to wrap this up because this was a fun day for us to just kind of, like, catch up and give you, the listener, a little background on, you know, how a lot of stuff started. A history lesson for all. <laughs> exactly, right? Thank you for inviting me out to this. No invite, man. Your yeah. family. Yeah, it's right? not it's really an invite, dude. It was it interesting, was, too. It, you know? It's not really an invite. It's just basically like, yo, come through. We're, we're going to record. It's not really an invite. All right, it's just, bet. All right, it's I'm, just holding, me saying, I'm, I'm going to hold you to that, then. I'm holding you to that. I so mean, when I pop up next time, you better have a mic ready. Well, if you're that. not too busy for <laughs> us, yeah. I mean, the mic is there always. You know? So you just bring your ass through, and we're good. Yeah. No, but well, I, like, I particularly like this episode with the reminiscing of, you know, the roots. and. Uh, it was something that I really wanted to do for a long time. We need to do it. Another another reminisce uh, throwback podcast about the early in days of in the another WWF. seven years. I reminisce exactly when they reminisce over you, my lord. <laughs> no, you see, we got to do another one, like uh, not not per se about the the history yet, but you know the old WWF days, like oh my god, yeah, Channel I Five. Fun. I just remember Channel Five. What was it? Saturday mornings, right? Well, I got a better. I got a. I got a better idea. Yeah. But that's something that we're gonna we're gonna reveal later on, where we're gonna be able to reminisce. But we'll get to that Channel, another time. Channel five after the after all the cartoons Saturday mornings was it twelve o'clock eleven oh. o'clock with the WWF superstars. Oh my god, yeah, dude. That was well again. Like it, everybody man. likes to make fun of me being the old one, dude. I go back to freaking watching the MSG channel, watching the house shows yeah. at all times of nights with my freaking cable box with like the dial on it uh anyway you know i'm dating myself listen you know what 
Thank you for joining us. I hope you had a great 4th of July. We're going to be back with a brand new episode next week. Make sure you follow us. It is uh, YouTube.com slash YPILW, SoundCloud.com slash YPILW. Also find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and TuneIn. And for everything else, yep, go to our website, YEPILW.com. Thanks for joining us. My name is Sonny Sofrito, and I was joined today by... Curvin, a.k.a. KD Swagger. And... For Pete's sake. Take care. Enjoy your holiday. Peace. Flex.